Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back to my channel if you are a reoccurring visitor. So, what's going on here? Well, it looks like I got a little bit of an unboxing to do, but first thing I want to thank whoever sent this. I end up getting an email, and the email said that uh, this person wants to remain anonymous, so I'm going to keep them anonymous. Uh, sent me a part for Wally in a Box's mod guitar um and asked if i would you know use it on his guitar and stuff so i ended up doing it so this is a part from guy keller uh the website they have a website online and uh they also i think they have an ebay store i'm not sure uh i didn't find an ebay store but i did find a website for these guys to so check them out and stuff like that to see what kind of a quality part this is you know uh guitars and basses parts is basically what they sell. Almost anything and anything that you could possibly want for a guitar, they pretty much sell it. Um, so I checked it out and I ended up putting this part on Wally in a Box's guitar. So you're going to have to wait for that to see what it is. So right now I have a little bit of an unboxing to do something I spotted on eBay that I wanted to pick up and check out and possibly use quite a bit of. So let's see if I can open this thing up because they have it packed quite well. What do we got going on over here? All right. So it is a drop, drop tuner. Yeah. So I picked this thing up online, and uh, let's see what the hell this thing is. All right, how do you open this box? All right, interesting configure because that folds over. Oh, I see some tape. Maybe that's why I couldn't open it. The damn thing was sealed. There we go. Oh, that's nice. Then we have the power supply that it also came with and Digitex paperwork here. Register online at digitech.com and get the most out of your new gear, including factory warranty, new product updates, exclusive customer offers. Ooh, maybe I should do that. So let's check this thing out here. So yeah, pretty simple little pedal here. You're able to drop tuning in um, half steps all the way down. And I guess if you go half step here, it's a full step, half step, full step, half step. So, and then it has a little on off switch here, which I believe that's for when you push on the pedal to switch it on and off. You can either have this set up to where you can keep your foot on there to keep it on and then let it go, and then it'll end up going back to just a pass through. Uh, so, I'll have to check that out. I think that's what it is. And then we have the power supply over here that goes with it, which uh, shouldn't be any tape on this box because this box was sealed up. In the original box. Oh, and of course you get your American plug-in and your European plugs. Kind of nice. Pretty cool. I like that. So this thing is brand new. Brand spanking new. I guess there is no battery that goes inside here. There's no cover or anything for a battery, so I guess it has to be has to be hardwired in for power all the time. So let's get into something else over here now and start going over everything that has been done to Wally in a Box's Firefly, even though there are several videos of it. I'm going to kind of like roll it up in one little bundle right here right now and show it off. And I also want to plug it in and kind of test it out to make sure that, well, everything's working properly and there is no problems. So let's get to that. All right, so let's talk about what I ended up putting for mods on the Firefly SG wannabe. Uh, SG, more like a Viper style body, an LTD, uh, the SB LTD Viper. Kind of. At least that's the way the horns look. So, starting off at the headstock, what do we got here? A set of Godos. These are Godo locking tuners, although you can't see the screw on the back of them for locks because they are on the top of the posts 
where the string winds. Now, I'm sure Wally in a Box probably isn't going to like them because I don't really care for them that much, but they do work and they work very well. So instead of going with Grovers, I went with the Goto Minis. These are the SG381-05P1MG, three left, three right. So the top of the Goto tuners, now this is where you would set up the locking mechanism that are on these. So there is a screw, you would get a flathead screwdriver on and as you loosen this up, you get it down to where the string is loose and you put a screwdriver on top of this and continue to loose and it will unlock the string that is inside of the post over here and then I'll release it to where you could change your strings. Now the nut on this thing, I didn't have to change it but I did have to kind of like re-seat uh, the strings in it because the nut on this thing, um, the string action height was way too high for what this was set at so I ended up changing that. They did use a bone nut so kudos to Firefly for using a bone nut on this thing. That's kind of a nice idea, good idea and keeps others from having to replace it with something better. So just like on the old Firefly, the one that had the broken neck on it, I ended up doing the same thing with this guitar because I found some dead notes you know, right around here going down the rest of the neck there was some dead notes especially on the high side where I had the action height set for uh, I was playing around with it off camera and I was like okay well I got a new part for here so I'm going to end up having to take the strings off of this thing anyways to put the new part that was donated for this guitar and uh, yeah so I ended up doing a fret leveling crowning polishing on this so as you can see they're nice Real nice and shiny, nice and clean. Oh yeah, he should love this. All right, so for the control side of things, what I ended up doing is I picked up four Goto VK1-19 control knob domes and uh, to replace, well, the ones that were on here were kind of like the classic style top hats and they did not fit the pots that I put inside of here, they're a little bit bigger than what uh, uh, what the old caps could take. So I ended up replacing those, hope he doesn't mind. Now I also did something with this where the uh, neck pickup is basically wired to where it'll be off phase and that'll be this knob right here. So instead of using a push pull, I did a push push. So now it's on, now it's off. So he has a little bit of a leverage as far as like getting some different tones, uh, depending on how he, he plays his guitar. All right, the fun part of this design, which was the custom wiring that I ended up doing. So I used CTS pots, they're 500K audios. Uh, I do not like the linear ones, I like the audio ones better. Um, they have more of a slope before they go to zero, as far as like, you know, turn using them as a volume or using them as a tone, you're able to get a little bit more out of them uh, before they cut completely off. That's why I like the volume, uh, the audio t uh, tapers instead of the uh, linear tapers. So these are CTS 500K pots. And then I use the, was it 0.22 or uh, 0.022 caps? which were original to this guitar to begin with. I just upgraded them with them with better caps. Cloth wrapped wiring. So this has all been just customized. And then all the grounds have been basically redone on this body and guitar. So all chambers as far as the pickup cavities and the control cavity goes, including now that there's a wire. I'm not sure if this one's the one or the other, the old guitar was the one that had uh, no ground going to the bridge or the tailpiece at all uh, to basically ground the strings. So now everything's been corrected. Everything's been uh, kind of rewired on this one here with all of its mods. And uh, yeah, it has a nice cool custom look to it as well. All right, the fun part of this. So right here are a set of Wilkinson's Classic Tone Ceramic PAF style humbucker pickups. All right, these are set for either a Les Paul style guitar. Uh, you can go with an SG. You know, you can basically put them on anything that can, has, you know, humbuckers on it that are cut out. So the resistance for the neck pickup is 7.6 and for the bridge it's 14.1. So you're going to get a 
not a high output, but you're going to have a decent output on these things. If it was a high output on the bridge, you would be looking at like an 18K or so. So I didn't want to go with anything that was going to scream too much. I still want to have a little bit of a classic sound with this, considering, you know, it's kind of kind of a classic style guitar. It's, it's kind of nice in the way it looks. It doesn't look like a heavy metal rocker, but yet it probably can still do this. All right, so the bridge and the tailpiece. All right, so the bridge is a Wilkinson's roller bridge. It's kind of nice because on each side of the bridge, you have a set screw that locks to the post, the mounting post, and you can kind of get away with setting this up pretty easily. Now, the intonation on this guitar was pretty much set up pretty damn good by just moving the bridge forward and backwards didn't have to move each saddle some of the saddles i moved to you know kind of fine tune the intonation setting on that thing to get it to be tuned properly but uh it was fairly easy i mean it wasn't that hard at all like i said you can get away with just moving the bridge forward and back like the top over here is centered and the bottom over here the set screw is all the way at the back and that gave me enough for the intonation to be set properly. The nice thing about these Wilkinson roller bridges too is you don't have to set the tailpiece real high or, or anything to clear the bottom of the bridge at all because there's plenty of room there. I mean, there's lots of room there. The way they have this set up and the way the string comes out of the roller, uh, it doesn't come even close to touching anything. Now, the donor part. So I got an email asking me if it was all right if someone sent me a um, a new part for the guitar, you know. And I said, yeah, it'd be fine, as long as it's not uh, powder, liquid, or anything that ticks or, 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 you know, goes boom, go ahead, send it. So he sent me the TP6 70 style bridge. And... Uh, Basically, you have fine tuners over here to where you can adjust or like kind of like on a um, uh, Floyd Rose, but this is on a tailpiece. And it's pretty easy to change the strings on this because you don't have to go through the back over here to put your strings through the, Brit, the tailpiece. There's basically just a little hook on the top over here where the string just lays down, fits in that groove, and goes all the way down to the, the neck to the tuners. It is a little bit of a pain in the ass as far as like, um, well, you know, putting them in and then going to the other side and making sure that they stay in where they're supposed to be. But it ain't that bad. It's not that hard. If you hold a little tension on the string as you feed it through the tuner, you'll be fine. But yeah, so that's a little bit of what has been upgraded on this guitar for the mods. All right, so this is an upgrade that I think a lot of you guys may want to do with your Firefly set neck guitars, and that is removing the strap lock and replacing the screw with something that is a little bit longer. That way it goes into the neck and kind of lock the neck and the body as one. Um, Considering the views that I had on the Firefly as far as a broken neck goes and how to fix it uh, Yeah, there was a lot of views on that uh, that video. So I think that using a longer screw going into the body Into the neck not coming out through the other side You know, you don't want to put a hole in your fretboard to have a screw coming through your fretboard But finding something that's suitable that'll fit into both areas uh, without coming through the other side would be a major upgrade in the Firefly set neck guitars just to be on the safe side as far as not having the same problem that Wally in a Box had with his original uh, at Firefly Guitar SG. Um, yeah, I really think this would help out a lot of people from having the same problem. So, all right, so let's get into a little bit of, you know, I haven't plugged this thing in. I don't even know if it, even my wiring and everything else even works. Other than the tuner picking it up when I plug it in, that's one thing. But to hear what it sounds like, it's another. All right, so right now I have this thing plugged in. I'm using Amplitude 5. I'm using a Marshall head on this with a, um, a 412 Celestian cabinet. There is no hard crunch to it, there is no distortion to it, there isn't any reverb to it, um, pretty much just dry. And there's also no noise gate. So right now it is recording audio. And you're not getting any like 
buzzing or anything else. So right now I have it in neck and bridge position. So I'm going to go ahead and probably play the same thing over and over again. So you guys are probably get bored or tired of it and probably fast forward to the end of the video. So I'm going to go ahead and start playing something. Right now it is in neck and bridge position. Uh, everything is basically turned up to 10. Um, and I have the wiring set for basically um, just standard. It's not, it's in phase, it's not out of phase. So let's go ahead and hear what it sounds. So that's just bridge and neck picking. So let's go with just the bridge. So let's just go with the neck now. Alright, so let's go out of phase. So right there is out of phase. You can hear the difference, so if I hold both neck and bridge pick up. You can hear the difference in that quite a bit. So let's see what the tone does on the bridge. That's why I like the audio taper better than the uh, linear taper because as I'm turning this down it has a slope say from from 10 to 0 going all the way down there is no cut off on there. So let's go to the neck. So there is a, a pretty decent change in sound. Now there is a little bit of a crunch because the master is turned up on this and the presence is basically kind of set to uh, two for the bass treble and mids. Um, and then the preamp volume is about in between two to four, not quite three yet, but, but yeah, so yeah, this should be. So yeah, it throws it off phase. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording because I'm sure you guys are, don't like or can't stand the sound that I'm making with this thing. But she works. She works good. And uh, all I have to do is polish it up, get all my grubby hand prints off of it, box it, and ship it out. You know, I think I will end up holding this thing hostage for a little while. Um, you know try to make a deal with uh, Wally in a box on his spaghetti sauce and his uh, salsa, which is some pretty good stuff. Just kidding. He already sent me some. <laughs> All right, you guys take it easy. Have a good one, and I will catch up with you all later.